Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's video we're going to do another game review recap, discussing the 15 game day we had on Friday and uh, previewing the next uh, 19 games we're going to have on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We'll go to all that coming up right now. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at the Indian Talking Channel. Before we begin this video, don't forget to like this video and subscribe down below. We are so close to 100 subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I would never be able to do with all of you guys, so don't forget to subscribe. So today we're going to be discussing a couple of uh, game reviews again. Uh, well, there were no games on Thursday we talked about. It was uh, U.S. Thanksgiving, so there's no need to just talk about anything that happened there. But there were 15 games that happened yesterday on Friday, so we're going to discuss all of those games. And we're going to go and look at some of the teams who have reached the 20-game mark, and then look ahead to see the next few games that are going to be on the NHL schedule. So we're going to start here with the New York Rangers and Philadelphia Flyers. This started at 10 o'clock in the morning yesterday, Pacific time. Uh, the New York Rangers were able to go to a 2 0 lead within the first two minutes of the game, and they would hold on for a 3 1 victory over the Philadelphia Flyers. Huge win there for the Rangers, continue to uh, put up points. Rangers are now up to 14 3 1. Flyers dropped down to 10 9 1 in their first 20 games. So, Flyers have reached now to a 20 game mark. Back to back losses against the New York teams. Not overly great, but they're still have a winning record of the 20 game mark, which I think is pretty good for them. Uh, for the Rangers, they look absolutely phenomenal. They're one of the best teams in the league, and they continue to put up points. Uh, for the Rangers, the Benjad scored twice. Kreider had a goal and an assist, and Wheeler had two assists for the Rangers in the win. But for the uh, Flyers, Katuria was a lone goal scorer in the loss. So definitely, it was a really close game. Most teams were really close, uh, but the Rangers, once again, seeming like a dominant team, uh, were able to get control early in this game and were able to hold on for a huge win. So once again, their offense still looks good. They're their first line carry of the team this game, and their defense shut down the Philadelphia Flyers, even though they gave up one goal. So definitely, really good stuff there for the uh, Rangers, who really improved to a huge good, uh, win over the Flyers. Then you had the the Detroit Red Wings, the only team so far who has beaten the Boston Bruins in regulation, beats them again. The Boston Bruins drop 5-2 to the Detroit Red Wings. Red Wings improved to 10-6-3, while the Bruins drop down to 14-2-3. So definitely, still only two regulation losses, so it's still really good for the Boston Bruins. But now they've lost two over the last three games, and this is their second regulation loss of the season. So not great news there, but the Red Wings seem to have the Boston Bruins number this year, being the only team so far who has beat them in regulation. Uh, Confer and Debrinka both had a goal and an assist. Gosses had two assists, and Fabry, Larkin, and Perron also scored for the Red Wings in the win. Well, for the Bruins, the Brask and Heinen were two goal scorers in the loss. So definitely, really good game. It was back and forth. The uh, Red Wings were able to get up to a 2-0 lead. They were able to hold on to 2-1 and 3-2 leads, and then got a couple of insurance markers to put this game to bed. So definitely, really good win there for the Red Wings to once again win. They're now 2-0-0 since they got back from Sweden. As for the uh, Boston Bruins, really bad loss. Not something you want to see, but they do lose once again in regulation to a Red Wings team. So Red Wings have the Bruins number, but two now losses in regulation for the Boston Bruins to the Detroit Red Wings. Then we had the Chicago Blackhawks to come on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Uh, this looked like it was going to be the Maple Leafs win. They were up 3-1 in the second period, uh, but then the Hawks would make it a 3-2 game. And then this goal here from Jason Dickinson, which was the hat trick at that point. Jason Dickinson's first career hat trick, all clips credit to the Sportsnet, but Dickinson's first career hat trick tied this game up. He scored all three goals for the Blackhawks to tie this game up at 3-3. That's the way it would go to overtime. And then in overtime, young rookie Kevin Korchinski will get the OT winner as the Blackhawks would down the Maple Leafs 4 3 in overtime and sweep the season series with them as they have already beaten them one time earlier this year. So, really bad loss for the Leafs. Hawks end their losing streak and improved to 6 12 0, while the Leafs dropped down to 10 5 3. So, not going to use there for the Maple Leafs. Uh, Jickinson had a hat trick and Korchinski, the OT winner for the Blackhawks in the win. Meanwhile, Domi had two assists and Yarn Croak, Robertson, and Reeves, first as a member of the Maple Leafs, all scored for the Leafs in the loss. Definitely. It was a really close game. This was a really winnable game for the Leafs. They had a lot of opportunities to close this game out to regain the lead after the Hawks tied it, but it was a Hawks win. So good to see the Hawks were able to get the comfort behind victory to end their losing streak. That was a much new win for the Hawks after losing a couple of straight games. Leafs do wind up losing in overtime, but it was a close game. Hopefully, they can bounce back from this. Then you have the Columbus Blue Jackets to come New Jersey Devils. It was a really close game. There was only scoring in the first period if I'm correct and that is that the Jackets were able to win 2-1. Jackets were able to get to a 1-0 lead and then a 2-1 lead and they would shut the game down the rest of the way and they would wind up being the slumping New Jersey Devils. The uh, Devils dropped to 8-9-1 and, and I think they're like 1-6-1 in their past 7 so they're not doing overly well right now. Jackets now got back-to-back -back wins right now at the 6-11-4 and are not too far back as the New Jersey Devils at 16 points. So really good stuff there for the Jackets. Uh, Robinson and Jenner were two goal scorers in the win for the Jackets. Holds the long goal score for the Devils in the loss, definitely. Devils can't find 
end up floating right now. Uh, the team who a lot of people thought was going to be a for sure guaranteed playoff team has not looked like it over the past little while. Uh, the Devils really need to start stepping up their game if they're going to try and make the playoffs. But it's definitely going to be interesting to see how they do. Uh, good to see the Jackets have won back-to-back -back games. They may have dug themselves into a hole they can't dig out of. Uh, but it's really good to see the Jackets are able to get a couple of wins in a row now. So good stuff there from the Jackets. But the Devils really need to start picking up the pace if they're going to try and make the playoffs. Then we have the National Predators absolutely destroy the St. Louis Blues 8-3 to to improve their winning streak to four games. They're now up to 9-10-0, dropping the St. Louis Blues to 10-8-1. Really good game there from the Preds, who once again continue on with their winning streak and have a fantastic offensive showing. Evangelista and Forsberg both having two goals and an assist, and Shiro, who had a goal and two assists, all had three-point nights. Uh, Carrier had two assists, O'Reilly against his former team, Trennan, and this goal here from Spencer Stastny, his first career NHL goal, which made it 4-1 at the time and wound up being the eventual game winner, with the other goal scorers for the Predators in the win. So good things there for a lot of the Predators, including Stastny. Meanwhile, for the St. Louis Blues, Thomas and Buchnevich both had a goal and an assist, and Neighbors also scored for the Blues in the loss. So definitely, it was not great stirring there for the Blues. I think it's the fourth of the last five games that the Blues are giving up five goals in the game. So not great news there. The Blues are not doing overly well defensively. Uh, they still scored three goals. They're not doing overly bad offensively, but still keeping the puck out of their net is not an overly great thing for the Blues right now, and hopefully they can recover and not do overly bad and not just in future. But definitely, it was an all great game there for the Blues. Uh, Preds have definitely found their offensive touch. They're starting to do a lot better. Uh, is this going to be enough to dig themselves out of the hole they had themselves in at the 15-game mark? Maybe. And they're only a game back of 500, but... It might still be too little too late for that team. Uh, but good win there for the Predators. Then we go over to the Oilers, who wound up being the uh, Capitals, shutting them out 5 0. It was a really good win there for the Oilers to improve to 6 12 1, dropping the Caps to 10 5 2. So, really good stuff there from the Oilers. McDavid had four assists. Drysdale had two goals and eight assists. Nugent Hopkins had a goal, two assists, both having three point nights. Uh, Hyman had two assists night, and Bouchard and Kane also scored for the Oilers. And Skinner has stopped all 25 shots he faced in the shutout and the victory. So, definitely really good stuff there for the Oilers. Skinner was good. Uh, their defense was good this game. Uh, their offense got started really fast, and they wound up kept on putting on the pressure. So, that was a really good game for the Oilers. Now, is it enough to turn around this season? Not exactly sure. But if you look at the four wins they had, just before they made a coaching change, and then since they made the coaching change, who are those teams against? The Kraken, the Islanders, and the Capitals. The Islanders and the Capitals are two of the worst teams in goals for this year. Uh, at this point in time, they're both in the bottom five, and the Kraken have had trouble scoring at times this year. So, uh, good to see they had a really good game here defensively. But if you look at the games they played against teams who are lower end in the goals for category and the Caps and the Owls, they only gave up one goal. But if you look at the teams who are really in the higher end category, like the Panthers, like the Bolts, like the Hurricanes, they gave up a ton of goals. So definitely, I, I think this was a really good win for the uh, Oilers. They were able to uh, hold the Capitals' low-ranking offense to uh, no points. But definitely, this is something that they needed to have to sort of have a step in the right direction. But can they do this against teams like uh, Florida or Tampa? It's going to be interesting to see. The Caps do wind up losing for the first time in a while. And the Oilers are able to get to within six games of 500. Then we had the San Jose Sharks take a 2-0 lead against the Montreal Canadiens. And they wound up losing 3-2 in a shootout. The Canadiens were able to come back and take a victory over the San Jose Sharks. Canadiens improved to 500 at the 20 game mark at 9-9-2. While the Sharks drop to 30, 15, and 2 at the 20 game mark with only 8 points. So definitely not great news there for San Jose Sharks, but I do get a point in this one. Uh, Caulfield had a goal and an assist. Kovacevic also scored in regulation. Well, Suzuki and Yelonen uh, were the two goal scorers in the shootout for the Canadians in the win. Meanwhile, for the San Jose Sharks, Eklund had a goal and an assist. Hurdle had two assists. Hoffman also scored in regulation against his former team, while uh, Eklund was the lone goal scorer in the shootout. So definitely a really close game. Both teams are lower end in their uh, divisions and in their uh, conferences. Neither one is doing overly great, uh, but the Canadians are able to come away with the victory, get back up to 500 for a time being. So a really good win there for the Canadians. Uh, the LA Kings would jump out to a huge lead and wound up beating the Anaheim Ducks 5-2 to improve to 12-3-3. Fiala scored twice, Kopitar had a goal and an assist, and Kempe Moore and Dowdy all had two assists, while Byfield and Kalia or other two goal scorers for Kings in the win. Meanwhile, Gudis and Kalorn were two goal scorers for the Ducks in the loss as they dropped to 9-11-0 in their first 20 games. So definitely not great news there for the Ducks who have now lost uh, multiple games in a row. I think they've lost like four in a row now and they're not doing overly well. They're back down to below 500 at the 20 game arc which is never overly good. So bad news there for the Anaheim Ducks. For the Kings, a huge win there. They're still really, really good. They're up to 12-3-3. They're clicking on all cylinders right now and would not be a team I want to face right now. So definitely good news there for the Kings. 
Then we had the Buffalo Sabres come back and beat the Pittsburgh Penguins 3-2 after being down 2 one nothing at one point. Really good win there for the Sabres. Tuck and Skinner both had a goal and an assist. Olsen had two assists and Oposo also scored for the uh, Sabres in the win. Or for the Pittsburgh Penguins, Eller and Crosby were two goal scorers in the loss. Penguins dropped down to 9-10-0 in the season, uh, now back down to below 500. Sabres, on the other hand, have improved to 9-9-2 and and they're back up to 500 at the 20 game mark. So fantastic news for the Sabres who really needed that win to get back up to 500. Hopefully they can start getting some more momentum, but that was a really good game there. Good come from behind victory for the Sabres, so definitely that was a really good thing there for the Buffalo. As for the Pittsburgh Penguins, really bad loss. They've started to lose a couple of games recently, they're like 1-4-0 in the last five. So not great news for the Pittsburgh Penguins, and hopefully they can start to uh, turn up the Jets a little bit in the next little while. Uh, the New York Islanders would score four consecutive goals after beating down one nothing, and wound up winning over the Ottawa Senators 5-3. to It was a really close game, but the Isles were able to come with the victory. Palmieri and Wallstrom both had a goal and an assist. Nelson and Romanov both had two assists, and Holmstrom, Barzell, and Lee all also scored for the Islanders in the win. While Batherson scored twice, Stutzla goal and assist, Joseph added two assists for Sens in the loss. So, really bad loss there for Senders to drop down back to 500 at 8 8 0, while the Islanders improved to 8 6 and 5. So, Islanders have now had a three game winning streak. Really good stuff there. They're able to get a little bit more offense in the last few games, uh, but definitely they're back up to above 500. Uh, Sens are back down below 500, and their hot start from the past couple of games has not done overly well to, in that game. But definitely, the Sens still look really good, and I still think they're going to contend for playoffs. So, really good stuff there for Senators. Then we had the Tampa Bay Lightning get Andre Vasilevsky back, and he helped the Tampa Bay Lightning down the Carolina Hurricanes 8-2. to This was a fantastic game from Tampa. Uh, for the Bolts, uh, Kucherov had a 6.0 with 2 goals and 4 assists. Point had a hat-trick. This was the hat-trick goal here that made it 8-2 for Tampa Bay. Uh, so it was a huge goal for Point to get a hat-trick. He also had two assists, so Point gets a hat-trick and five point nights in uh, that game. Uh, Hagel had a 3.0 with a goal and two assists. Samkos had a goal and an assist. And Glenn Denning also scored for the Bolts in the win. Meanwhile, for the Carolina Hurricanes, Bunting had a goal and an assist. And Nelson also scored for the Carolina Hurricanes in the loss as they dropped to 11-8-0 on the year. So definitely... Really bad stuff there from the Carolina Hurricanes. That was not a great game. Uh, they get quadrupled up by the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, who definitely absolutely destroyed them in this game. Meanwhile, for the Tampa Bay Lightning, this was a hugely good offensive game. They only had 14 shots on net, so there was just not any goaltending there or defensive work from the uh, Carolina Hurricanes. And this was a really dominant win for the Bolt. Tampa improves to double-digit wins at 10-6-5, and while the Carolina Hurricanes dropped to 11-8-0 and in the year. So definitely really good stuff there for the Bolts. Then we saw the Winnipeg Jets shut out the Florida Panthers 3-0 to improve to 12-5-2 on the season and tie the Stars in the Avalanche for tops in the Central Division. Meanwhile, the Panthers drop to 12-7-1 and one, not great stuff there for Florida who continues to drop and has Tampa and Toronto now breathing down their necks for second in the Atlantic. Uh, Appleton and Sandberg both had two assists while Lowry, Ehlers, and Niederreiter were three goal scorers in the win for the Jets. And Hellebuck stopped all 28 shots he faced in the victory for the uh, Jets. So a really good uh, win there for the Jets. They got a couple of goals uh, to get up to a 2 nothing lead. And they would hold on for the huge 3 nothing victory over the uh, Panthers. Not letting the Panthers offense get anything. So really good stuff there for the Jets. Then we had the Calgary Flames score 5 and answer goals coming back from down 4-2. To win their first of this really tough stretch for the uh, Flames. 7-4 over the Dallas Stars to improve to 8-9-3. Uh, in their first 20 games. Uh, Sharon Govich had 3 points with a goal and 2 assists. Guerrero, Coleman, this goal here from Elias Flintholm, which put the Flames up 5-4 uh, early in the third period. That would wind up being the game winner, so really good stuff there from Lindholm, but as well as Lindholm uh, and Ruzichka all had a goal and an assist. Mangiapani had 2 assists. Backlund and Kadri also scored for the Flames in the win. So really good stuff there from the Flames, who really got a huge win there against the Stars. Meanwhile, Johnston scored twice, Robertson had a goal and assist, Ben and Dodonov had two assists, and Pavelski also scored for the Stars in the loss. So definitely not great news there for the Stars with almost back-to-back -back games. Uh, Stars are down to 12-5-2, like we said, tie with the Jets. Meanwhile, for the Flames, huge win there to improve to 8-9-3, the back to only one game below 500. Uh, they are below 500 at the 20 game mark, which is not overly great, but still. They did a really good comeback against the Dallas Stars, I expect them to continue to do well. Then you had the Avalanche go up to a 2-0 lead. The Wild would erase that 2-0 deficit, tie the game up at 2-2. And then after that game was tied 2-2, the Avalanche would score a third-period goal to give themselves a 3-2 lead. And that's the way the game would end. The Avs would beat the uh, Wild 3-2-2, like we said, go up to 13-6-0 and tie the Stars and the Jets for top spot in the Central Division. Uh, the Avalanche were able to get goals from Colton, Nachushkin, and McDermott, who were the three goal scorers of the game. Meanwhile, for the Minnesota Wild, 
Kaprizov had a goal and the assist, and Ek also scored for the Wild in the loss. As the Wild dropped down to 5 9 and 4, well, the Avalanche improved to, like we said, 13 6 0. So, really, not great news for the Wild, who are now four games below 500. That's awful news for them. Hopefully, they can start to win a couple more games, but that's really bad news for them. Meanwhile, for the uh, Colorado Avalanche, really good win. Uh, they were able to overcome blowing a two goal lead, and they were able to come with a victory. So, really good stuff there for the Avalanche to tie for the Central Division title. And then we have the Vancouver Canucks come away with a 5 1 victory over the Seattle. Kraken less than a week after the Kraken beat them. Uh, the Canucks were able to improve to 14-6-1, dropping the Kraken back to below 500-8-9-5. Uh, Garland and Amon both had to assist while Bluger, first as a member of the Vancouver Canucks, Hoglander, Mikheyev, Joshua and Lafferty were the five goal scorers for the Canucks in the win, and Cartier was the lone goal scorer for the Kraken in the loss. Definitely, it was not a great showing from the Kraken. Definitely had some moments there where they could have easily tied the Canucks, uh, but definitely it was not a great showing there for Seattle, and they're going to go into the next game looking for another win to get back up to 500. Meanwhile, for the Vancouver Canucks, they definitely show that they're still a really good team. Even though they've been slumping a bit recently, uh, they improved to 14-6-1. They're still one of the top teams in the Western Conference, and they're still breathing uh, down Vegas' necks and still a little bit ahead of LA. So at this point in time, really good stuff there from the Canucks as they beat the Seattle Kraken. But that's all the game uh, reviews I want to discuss here today. A couple of quick 20 game reviews for some teams just who hit the 20 game mark yesterday. Uh, first, the Philadelphia Flyers. They hit the 20 game mark. They're 10 9 1 for 21 points. 63 goals for, 58 goals against, a plus 5 rating. Players who have over 14 points at the 20 game mark. Couturier has 5 goals, 9 assists for 14 points. Tippett has 7 goals, 7 assists for 14 points. Atkinson has 8 goals, 6 assists for 14 points. Connecting has 11 goals, 4 assists, 15 points. He's on pace for 45 goals. Faraby has 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points. And Sinai has 2 goals, 14 assists, and 16 points. So definitely really good stuff there for the Flyers. They're definitely a lot more competitive than I thought they would be at this point in time. Uh, but still, not overly great news for the uh, Flyers. Then for the Montreal Canadiens, they reached a 20 game mark yesterday. They're 992 for 20 points in 20 games. They have 59 goals for, 71 goals against, a minus 12 rating. Uh, the only three players who have over 14 points is Mike Matheson, who has 5 goals, 10 assists, 15 points, and Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield, who both have 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points. Suzuki and Caulfield both on pace for 70 points. Matheson on pace for 62 points as a defenseman, which is fantastic news for the uh, Canadians. So really good stuff there for Montreal. Then two of the California teams at the 20 game mark yesterday in the Anaheim Ducks and the San Jose Sharks. For the Ducks, they uh, dropped down to 9-11-0 for 18 points at the 20 game mark. 56 goals for, 65 goals against, a minus 9 rating. Uh, and then McTavish for Toronto and Strom are the only three players who have over a point per game right now. Strom has two goals, 13 assists, 15 points for the Anaheim Ducks. But Toronto's on the point per game pace right now. Also on pace for 53 goals, currently having 13 goals, 7 assists, and 20 points. And McTavish is on pace for just above a point per game pace. McTavish has 10 goals, 11 assists, 21 points, on pace for 41 goals, and 86 points. So definitely, McTavish has had a fantastic start to the season. And the Ducks are doing okay. Not doing overly fantastic, but the Ducks have definitely done fantastic to start the season. If you look at the San Jose Sharks, uh, their uh, 20 game record is 315 and 2 for only 8 points. That's an awful record for the San Jose Sharks. Uh, they have 30 goals for, 86 goals against, a minus 56 rating. Uh, and then the only player who has 14 points or more at the 20 game mark is Tomas Schertle, who has 4 goals, 10 assists, 14 points. He's currently on pace for 57 points at the uh, end of the season. So definitely not great news there for the San Jose Sharks. Then you go over to the Buffalo Sabres. Just like the Montreal Canadiens, they're 9-9-2 at the 20 game mark uh, for 20 points. 57 goals for 63 goals against a minus 6 rating. Not overly fantastic. Players who have hit over 14 points or at the 14 point mark uh, at the 20 game mark. Uh, JJ Paterga has 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points. Milstead has 3 goals, 13 assists, 16 points. Skinner has 9 goals, 7 assists, 16 points. And Rasmus Salin is currently their leader with 4 goals, 13 assists, and 17 points on pace for around 69 points. So definitely really good stuff there for Sabres. Not as many offensive weapons as they had last year who were doing really, really well, but definitely still some really good stuff there. Uh, the Florida Panthers hit the 20 game mark uh, yesterday, going up to 12 7 1 at the 25 points in 20 games. So, really good stuff there for Florida. Uh, 58 goals for, 55 goals against, a plus 3 rating. So, really good stuff there. Players with over 14 points at the 82 game mark. Varaghi has 8 goals, 7 assists, 15 points for the Panthers. Kachuk has 3 goals, 14 assists, 17 points. Well, Barkov has 6 goals, 11 assists, 17 points. Kachuk on pace for 69 points. Uh, Barkov on pace for 70 points. And then Reinhardt's definitely been the leader for that team. Reinhardt, 13 goals, 12 assists, 
25 points. He's on pace for 53 goals and 102 points. So definitely, if Reinhardt keeps up this pace, he's going to get paid this offseason. So definitely, really good stuff there for the Panthers. And then for the Calgary Flames, at the 20-game mark, they're 893 for 19 points, which isn't as bad as it was before, but still, they're below 500. Uh, 61 goals for, 71 goals against, a minus 10 rating. Not overly fantastic. And the only player who has over 14 points at the 20-game mark is Elias Lindholm. Lindholm having 5 goals, 10 assists, and 15 points. So really, not great news there for the Calgary Flames, uh, but hopefully they're able to continue to improve this team, and maybe they're able to get back in the playoff race, but at the 20 game mark, they are below 500, so definitely. As you can see here, San Jose is below 500, Anaheim is below 500, Calgary is below 500 at the 20 game mark. That's not overly great news for those teams, as we said in our last video. Uh, only 12.5% of teams, only 8 of 64 since the standings changed in 13-14, have been able to make it to the playoffs as they're having a below 500 record at the 20 game mark, so maybe some of these teams are able to make it into the playoffs after having poor starts to the season uh, but it's not overly guaranteed so definitely it'll be interesting to see meanwhile Florida, like we said, teams who had over 25 points at the 20 game mark usually wind up making the playoffs. 85% of those teams wind up making the playoffs so Florida's in a really good position right now at 25 points Meanwhile, teams like Montreal, Philly, and Buffalo are sort of the murky middle. Not sure if they're going to be able to make the playoffs or if they want to miss in the playoffs. So interesting stuff there, uh, but definitely that's really good stuff there for the Panthers to get that high. But not overly great news to see Calgary, Anaheim, San Jose all on the lower end of the spectrum, below 500 at the 20 game mark. So not great news there. Uh, going over to a couple of quick game previews and then a quick look at the standings. So if you look at the game previews, today we have eight games on the schedule. At 10 a.m. Pacific time, we have the Boston Bruins take on the New York Rangers. Bruins play game number 10 on the season for them in this game. Two of the best teams in the NHL right now, so it'll be interesting to see how that one goes. Then at 1 p.m. Pacific time, we have the Canadians take on the Kings. Kings looking for back-to-back -back wins and looking to uh, once again tie the Canucks for second in the Atlantic Pacific Division. You now the Canadians are looking to go above uh, 500. Then we have the Sabres taking on the Devils. Sabres looking to go back above 500 just like the Canadians. Devils looking to get back up to 500. So not good news there for the Devils that are already below it. So hopefully they can get back up to 500. Then we have the Maple Leafs taking on the Penguins. Leafs trying to get back up into the top three in the Atlantic. Penguins looking to get back up to 500 by a 20 game mark because they play their 20th game. Then we have the Islanders taking on the Flyers at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the Islanders playing game number 20 looking to improve to 9-6-5. and Or the Flyers looking to end this two game losing streak uh, and beat the Islanders who wound up starting them on this losing streak. Then at 7 o'clock we have the Calgary Flames taking on the Colorado Avalanche. Avs looking to improve to 14-6-0 uh, at the 20 game mark and uh, take the lead in the Central Division. Me on the Flames looking to get back to 500, playing another tough, difficult game. Then have the Arizona Coyotes take on the Golden Knights. Coyotes looking to get back up to 500 as they play their 20th game. Take on the Golden Knights. We're looking to keep uh, ahead of teams like the Canucks and the Kings in the Pacific Division. And then the other game at 7 o'clock today is the Canucks and the Sharks. Canucks looking to improve uh, and keep pace with the Kings and the Knights in the Pacific Division. Sharks, meanwhile, looking to uh, get another point and uh, wind up getting a little bit closer to uh, the double digit point mark. So definitely, it'll be interesting to see how those games go. Then on Sunday, we have five games. Minnesota Wild take on the Detroit Red Wings. Wings looking for their third straight win of the season in their 20th game of the season. You know, the Minnesota Wild look to uh, end this losing streak and uh, improve their record closer to 500. Then 11 p.m. Pacific time, we have the Blues taking on the Blackhawks. Blackhawks looking to get back-to-back -back wins with a huge win over the St. Louis Blues. Blues looking to get it back on the winning record in their 20th game. The Jackets take on the Canes at 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the Jackets looking to improve to closer to 500 and improve to a winning streak to three straight games. Canes looking to bounce back off of their awful win loss against the uh, Tampa Bay Lightning and uh, improve to a higher record at the 20 game mark. Then the Jets and the Preds who both play their 20th game play at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Jets looking to uh, keep pace with the Az and the Stars in the Central Division. Uh, Preds looking to get back up to 500. And then the Oilers play the Ducks at 6 p.m. Pacific time. Also their uh, 20th game for the uh, Oilers. Ducks looking to get back to closer to 500. Oilers looking to build off of their win against the Washington Capitals. And then on Monday, there are six games of NHL action. Oh, at 4 p.m. Pacific time, we have the Boston Bruins looking to keep ahead of all the teams in the Atlantic, taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. We have the Buffalo Sabres looking to get a huge win over the New York Rangers to improve their record. At 
Florida Panthers looking to keep ahead of teams in the Atlantic Division, taking on the Ottawa Senators. At 6 p.m. Pacific time, we had the Bolts taking on the Avalanche, rematch of a couple of years ago, Stanley Cup Final. At 6.30 p.m. Pacific time, we have the Vegas Golden Knights taking on the Calgary Flames. Flames looking to get to above 500. Golden Knights looking to keep the, the Flames lower in the standings and keep ahead of the teams of the Kings and the Canucks for a top spot in the Pacific. And then we have the Sharks and the Capitals at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time. Caps probably looking to get back into the winning column. Sharks looking to sort of upset them once again and sort of try and get out of the bottom of the standings. So definitely interesting stuff there, but those are your game previews. And now a quick look at the standings. Uh, as of right now, the Boston Bruins lead the Atlantic Division with 31 points, followed by a 25-point Florida and 25-point Tampa. The uh, New York Rangers lead the Metro Division at 29 points, followed by 22-point Washington, 22-point Carolina. The 23-point uh, Leafs are first wildcard, 23-point Red Wings are second wildcard. Those two are followed by the 21-point Islanders, 21-point Flyers, 20-point Sabres, 20-point Canadians, 18-point Penguins, 17-point Devils, 16-point Senators, and Jackets. So those are the uh, current teams who are out of the playoffs right now. For the Eastern Conference in the West, the Colorado Avalanche, the Winnipeg Jets, and the Dallas Stars are all tied with 26 points in 19 games for first in the Central Division. Uh, currently, it's Colorado 1, Winnipeg 2, Dallas 3. The Vegas Golden Knights are first in the Pacific Division with 30 points, followed by the 29-point Canucks and the 27-point Kings. The 21-point Blues and the 21-point Kraken are two wildcard teams, followed by the 19-point Flames, 18-point Preds, 18-point Coyotes, 18-point Ducks, 14-point Wild, 13-point Oilers, 12-point Hawks, and 8-point Sharks. Definitely not great news there for some of those teams who are really far out of a playoff spot, but good news for a lot of those other teams, definitely. That's all I'm going to talk about for today. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on all of this down in the comments. What were some of your most intriguing games from the past couple of days? Uh, what sort of games did you think were the, some of the better ones over the past couple of days? Uh, are, which games are you most looking forward to over the next three days? And are you surprised at any uh, people in the standings? Are you surprised the Oilers are still as low as they are? Are you surprised that the Preds or the Flames have started to gain ground the standings? Are you surprised that the uh, Flyers and Islanders are right uh, out of a playoff spot? Are you surprised that the Florida teams and Boston are the top three teams around the Atlantic Division? Definitely. Love to hear your guys' thoughts on all of that down in the comments. That's all I'm going to talk about for today. Remember to like this video, and if you really like it, remember to subscribe down below. We're so close to your subscribers. Thank you for all of your support. I'll never be able to love you guys, so don't forget to subscribe. I also do a blog talking about news, rumors, analysis, stuff like that, so definitely check that out. I'll link down in the description below, and I can't wait to see you guys all for the next video. See you guys soon.